Hello and welcome to Bike Radar. Today, we're going to be seeing just how much of a difference upgrades can make to your favorite old bike. While we'd all like to be able to go out and buy a brand new bike, most of the time, it's a luxury we simply cannot afford as we've spent far too much money on fashionable, trendy millennial clothing. It was just a joke, no need to tell me, I look like an idiot in the comments. On the other hand, upgrades can be a relatively affordable way to breathe life back into an old, trusty steed. With this in mind, our sponsors Kadex have set us a challenge to upgrade this lovely old 2011 Genesis Equilibrium with parts from their own line, Pro Components and Shimano. In this video, I'll talk you through where the gains can be made with those upgrades and how much of a difference they make in the real world. Now, before we send this beloved old Genesis to be stripped, I'll talk you through its current build. Originally built in 2011, this Genesis has been slowly upgraded with some of the nicest mid-range parts from the past 10 years. There's a full Shimano 105 10 speed era group set, though the brakes have been upgraded. We also have fulcrum wheels, a pro saddle, and a mix of Genesis and FSA finishing kit. In terms of tires, we have a rather worn out, rather sad Continental GP4000 S2 tire in a 23 millimeter width, unrideable these days on the front. And on the back, we have a 25 millimeter wide Maxxis High Road. Both desperately need upgrading, though I will miss them terribly. Being made of steel, it isn't the lightest bike in the world. As with any high quality steel frame, it has that wonderful, smooth ride quality. Though it is very light, the saddle is very long and narrow. Saddle design has moved on a great deal since then. It's not what I would go for in 2021. Now, before you jump in the comments, yes, I am indeed aware that these Time Expresso 15 pedals are in fact worth probably more than the rest of the bike put together. Now, with times and component designs moving on, this bike is beginning to feel a little bit dated, but more importantly, the components are also quite worn out. So now is the time to take the Genesis away for its full makeover. Well, as you can see, my Genesis has been positively transformed into a state-of-the-art masterpiece with that retro edge coming from the aforementioned frame. For the wheels, we've got Kadex's 42 tubeless models. The claimed weight for these is a seriously light 1,265 grams, and they have all the mod cons you would expect of a contemporary wheel set. These include a relatively wide outer rim profile of 23 millimeters, hookless rims, and fancy carbon spokes. It's also nice to see Kadex supplying its own brake pads as well. The old fulcrum wheels were heavier and narrower, so it's safe to say the 42s are a big step up. When it came to tires, we wanted something super fast and super supple to make sure our new build feels as lively as possible. So I asked Kadex for some of their 28mm wide race tubeless tyres. These feature Kadex's RRS compound. This is silica based and claimed to increase grip while reducing rolling resistance compared to a more standard tyre. They also get something called Race Shield Protection, which is basically an ultra-thin Kevlar material incorporated into the casing, which is claimed to provide superior puncture protection. Now, when this bike was originally released, you said you were planning to upgrade your road bike to a pair of 28mm tyres. Your riding pals would have probably thought you had gone mad with the conventional wisdom of the time, still earing towards narrower tires being faster and better. Fortunately for me and you, times have changed. 
and the road bike world has finally caught on to the benefits of wider tyres. Not only is it far more comfortable, thanks to being able to run lower pressures, but in certain circumstances, wider tyres can actually roll faster than narrower ones. The fact they're tubeless as well will thrill and frustrate some of you in equal measure. Even among the bike radar team, tubeless on the road has yet to truly catch on. Some of us love it, and some of us are less keen. For me, well, I'm a big fan. And when you compare these tyres to the very tired and narrow models that were originally on the build, then it's night and day. They're far more supple, have more grip, and most importantly, feel much more comfortable. Now, you may remember the previous saddle on this bike was fairly long and narrow at the end. If that kind of saddle works for you, then fantastic. If it doesn't, then you may be looking for something more modern. At 138 grams, the Boost saddle from Kadex not only saves a bit of weight, but has that slightly shorter length and wider nose, which has become really popular over the last few years. It allows you to more easily pitch yourself further forward for better power transfer without pinching the places which don't want to be pinched. And for most of us, that can only be a good thing. Of course, I will reiterate once again that saddle choice is very, very much down to personal preference. So it is always worth making sure you can try a model before you buy. Now onto the group set, but first, a bit of a backstory. As you may be aware, at the time of filming, getting a hold of bikes and components has been nigh impossible, even for industry insider Illuminati members such as myself. So when I contacted Shimano to inquire about getting a possible group set, I had already resigned myself to them telling me that we'd love to help, but we have literally nothing in stock anywhere. So imagine my surprise and delight when the nice folk over at Shimano said they had a full 105 group set, albeit with Ultegra shifters and an Ultegra mech for me. Happy days. And here it is, in all its rare and beautiful glory. Compared to the older 10-speed 105 that was on the old setup, this newer version ups the game in several areas. To start with, the old setup had an 11 to 25 tooth cassette, with 34 to 50 tooth chain rings. Basically, fairly standard compact gearing from some years ago. The new setup has an 11 to 32 tooth cassette on the back and a 36 52 on the front. This means I get more range at high and low speeds. I like to do lots of long and epic days out on the bike because it gives me something to talk about on Instagram. And a wide range gear setup like this is perfect for when you're rolling through the beautiful rolling terrain like we see here. Finally, we have the finishing kit, which comes from Shimano subsidiary brand Pro. To save some weight, we asked for a full carbon finishing kit because only that will do for me. Combined, the alloy stem carbon bars and alloy inline seat post weighs 598 grams, which is pretty damn light and a much more ergonomic setup than the previous one. Now the inline post is one of the most important changes for me, switching from the old setback post to a lovely straight one. If you are one of my loyal Instagram followers, you may already know that I've always struggled with setback posts. I just can't get the position I like to ride in with one of them and often feel like I'm hanging off the back of a bike. Inline posts pitch you a little further forward over the bottom bracket, allowing for what I feel is a much more powerful an efficient riding position. So that's why I've gone for it, because it works for me. Now you're probably wondering how much all of these upgrades have saved in terms of weight. Well, it adds up to almost a full kilo, which certainly isn't to be sniffed at. Now with all of that said and done, 
what is it actually like to ride? Now, it won't surprise you to hear that the most notable difference is, of course, the wheel set. The old tyres were pretty wooden, <laughs> not necessarily because they were bad tyres, but just because of their age and how narrow they were. These voluptuous 28mm tyres plump out to a lovely round profile on the rims, and it really, really smooths out the overall ride quality. Likewise, though we are of course riding on a lovely bone dry day, the braking has also been somewhat improved because the old pads were knackered. But really, for carbon clinchers, with these nice pads, they do work very, very well. Likewise, the old narrow saddle made for a bit of a numb ride after some time. The cutout on this saddle, the overall more modern shape, and again, that inline post just makes the whole thing much more comfortable for me. I also quite like the overall profile of the bars. You get a good bit of drop in there. So the drops actually are there for something. They're not the kind of naff, kind of shallow drops you often see. And the group set, well, it's brand new and fresh. New cables, new cassette, new chain. It feels delightful. And of course, on the climbs I'm riding today, with those precipitous pitches, that extra range makes all the difference in the world. So I can sit back, relax, and wave hello to the crows and trees in this beautiful forest. Now, if I could have only one upgrade, I'd probably go for the tires or the wheels. If you are one of this channel's dedicated followers, you will have heard me or one of my fabulous colleagues say before that tires are one of the best upgrades you can make to any bike. If you make them go tubeless as well, then perhaps all the better. The wheels saved a big chunk of weight and made the bike, of course, feel a lot more nippy and responsive. And they certainly do not come cheap, but if you're feeling generous, compared to a top spec bike, they could be a relatively affordable way of totally transforming your ride. Speaking of cost, there's no denying that if you bought all of these upgrades at once, it would still set you back a serious chunk of change. But perhaps the beauty of upgrades lies in the fact you don't have to do them all at once. You could start with the wheels, then move on to the tyres. Finally, moving on to the finishing kit many months down the line. This way, you can spread the costs over a more affordable timeline. So did this suite of juicy upgrades breathe life back into this wonderful old bike? And doubtless they did. But what do you think? Have you made any upgrades which totally transformed your old bike, or am I totally wrong and you should always upgrade with a brand new model every single year? Because otherwise, there's just no point. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe and slap that little bell icon. So every time we upload a new video, you will get a notification.